Welcome to Mama Broad's YouTube channel. I'm joined today by Georgina Shaw. Originally from London, Georgina lived in Peru and China before settling in Spain. She lives in the Costa del Sol with her husband and nine-year-old son. She founded Shaw Marketing in 2008 and works with high-profile clients in the area, including Specsavers, Soto Grande International School and Marbella Classic Grand Prix. Welcome, Georgina. Thank you very much, Jane. Thank you for joining me today. Georgina, how does marketing and PR compare in Spain to the UK? That's a good question. I think that there are lots of similarities, but of course there are lots of differences as well. And although the same skills exist here and the same ideas, I would say that in the expat community, what people need to understand is there's quite a big lack of trust in the marketplace. So because there's been quite a few people come and go, bit of you know cowboys and fly by night stuff, people want to really make sure that you are who you say you are. And they'll take some time to build up trust. So that's something that you need to understand in terms of how long it's going to take you to be able to successfully market your company. Also, I think, again, with the expat community, you've got lots and lots of different languages, lots and lots of different kind of centers where people live. And here on the Costa del Sol, for example, it's sort of a very small village, but stretched out over a large geographic area. So that brings with it some challenges. And then if you're talking about the Spanish people, what I've definitely noticed is rather than just responding to an email, they want you to call them, have a coffee, build up relationships. And so although that can be quite frustratingly slow, once you understand that and their need to connect with you on a more personal level, you can actually build really powerful and strong contacts moving forward. I find that too as well with Mum Abroad when we contact uh, the local market, that definitely people need a phone call rather than an email for sure, yeah. Why did you set up the company in the first place, Georgina? Well, I set up uh, unusually in 2008, which most people will realize is the, uh, the economic crash. And actually, it was caused by the crash because I came over in 2007. Um, to, I was recruited by a marketing and PR agency in Marbella to be their communications director. And pretty much as soon as I got off the plane, things started going downhill. And within six months, I didn't have a job anymore. So it was a question really of having to make my own opportunities if I wanted to stay. And I think that even not in a financial crisis, that's a very familiar story for expats here. It's kind of innovate, make your own path and make your own niche or, you know, you fail and you tend to go back. And do you mainly work with expat companies? I would say that the majority of my com my clients are expat companies. And while I've never wanted to exclude Spanish companies at all, I think there's a natural uh, attraction between people of the same nationality. And also, I think that there is a slightly different way of doing business between the Spanish and the expats. Um, and as a very organized person with a very sort of clear view of when and how I want things done, I have to admit that I am drawn more to the expat businesses for that reason <laughs> maybe you find some clients um some spanish who have lived abroad or work have worked for in uh, for multinational companies that kind of thing and maybe have a different slightly different outlook yeah you're absolutely right i mean the uh, the spanish companies that we have worked with have tended to be in the hospitality industry so we work with the marbella club hotel puente romano hotel uh finca quarters in and the kempinski all of those were headed predominantly by Spanish, but definitely with a very global outlook and looking to us to communicate with expats, tourists and locals as well. Georgina, what were the biggest challenges for you when you set up your business? Oh, good question. I and mean, there were lots of challenges, as anyone knows, who set up a business anywhere. Um, obviously, we were starting in the financial crisis, so there was very little investment around. Um, but in a way, that gave us a bit of a competitive advantage, I think, then and now, because we, we decided to set up in a very lean way, in a very low risk strategy way. Um, and that's definitely served us well for the last, oh gosh, it's been nearly 13 years now, but also during the current COVID crisis, that's helped us a lot. I think probably, as I mentioned to you before about how people market differently, that lack of trust 
um, and the the wariness that people have about you definitely was a challenge. But I could overcome that relatively easily through consistent networking online and offline and building up that trust in me as a person and then my capabilities and by connection, my company as well. And then I suppose really it's the bureaucracy <laughs> of setting things up properly and the expense of uh, paying social security. When I set up, there was no reduction. So you went straight on to sort of 300 or so euros per month, which at the beginning was, was crippling, I must say. Uh, so I'm very pleased to see that now, at least for the first sort of 18 months or so, there's some reductions in that. How beneficial do you think social media is to PR and marketing? I think that social media is an amazing tool. It's such a good step forward for small businesses, particularly to use because it's very flexible. It's very user friendly. It's been designed with somebody in mind with no technical experience or expertise at all. And so that means that really anybody can use it. And you've got such a huge platform of active users that you can connect with. Because you've got lots of different social media channels, you've also get different ways to contact different kinds of people. So for example, I really like LinkedIn if you're talking about business to business networking and social media versus Instagram if you're more um, image led or you're looking for a slightly younger audience. And of course, the users on Facebook are it's the, it's the biggest by far and you are able to get a big reach. And also, I think what's nice about Facebook particularly is using the Facebook advertising, you can really closely target. So you can target the uh, whether it's f females or males, what age range they are, where they live, the kind of interest they are. So you can really, really drill down and make sure that the investment that you make is going in the right direction and that you really target the messages. Do you find that sometimes people make mistakes with their social media advertising? And if they do, what would be the, the most common error? Yeah, there are different mistakes that people make. I think probably the first one would be lack of planning and lack of actually putting the social media activities within your, um, your plan and your objectives for the business. I think people think, I need to be on Facebook. I'll just be on Facebook rather than thinking, OK, what do I want to achieve from that social media activity? I think that's really important. I think as well, a lack of consistency. So people will go on and they get really excited and they post like 10 times a day for a month and then they lose the lose interest. They realize they don't have time and they sort of drop off. Whereas I always say to people, you're better posting less but more frequently and saving up all that inspiration that you've got to perhaps post, let's say three times a week and schedule it so that then you don't get stuck with no material when you're busy. Um, and because I think people do, they look at your social media channels, especially now, and they think, oh, they haven't posted for a while. Perhaps they've gone out of business or they're no longer there. And so you can actually create more problems for yourself there by that kind of big batch of posting and then nothing. And then I think lastly, there's two sides of the same coin. One is that people are too personal and friendly. So they use their personal profile rather than a business page to present their business. And that makes you look not very professional and your way of speaking might not really be up to your professional identity and your brand. But then on the flip side, I see lots of more kind of corporate clients who don't want to reveal themselves or tell any personal information about themselves at all on their company page. And that's almost as bad as going the other way because people want to know about you. They want to connect. They, I want to see you not just in your office, but what you do. And they want, you know, the best performing post by far that we do for our clients are pictures of them, their families, something nice that they do in their local area. And there's nothing wrong with having those things as part of your business because you are your business. It's just about finding the right balance, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think scheduling posts and creating a posting plan where you decide the topics you're going to post and the frequency of which you're going to post those, that really, really helps to make sure you've got the mix. And that's really fundamental. Georgina, how much English media is there in Spain? 
there's a lot of expat media there's a that's just a combination of english speaking which i would say is probably the biggest and then you've got uh scandinavian media you've got uh german dutch french as well and a few others but those probably would be the main ones they tend to be focused around the costas where the biggest proportion of expat residents live and although they're significantly smaller than your national spanish media they are very powerful because i think it's it creates a sense of community within those expat populations and it's definitely a good way of getting your message across if you're if you're advertising or doing pr do you have any favorites? Do you have any recommendations for people if they're looking to read things in English? Um, well, there's lots of good ones. Um, one that covers kind of all the coastal regions and also Mallorca is Euro Weekly News. That's got a lot of uh, stories online and also in the paper, and you can read the paper online. You've got the Olive Press as well, which is expanding its reach also on the on the costas of Mallorca. Um, and then you've got sort of magazines, there's lots of nice magazines on the Costa del Sol, particularly like Essential Magazine, for example, which is a nice kind of mix of news and fashion. Society Magazine, if you like, a bit more kind of, of of the fashion and beauty side um and i mean the good thing is that now because obviously we all google everything <laughs> our areas of interest as long as you're quite specific about the locations you're likely to find um the same old media or websites popping up and then you can kind of make a beeline for then finding out more about them have you had to deal with issues surrounding brexit and if so what have been the key challenges I think we've all been challenged by Brexit uh, psychologically as much as practically. From a business point of view, I haven't really found a lot of difference. I think that the kind of companies that I deal with, although they're often promoting to the uh, expats or tourists, they're very much based in Spain and they, they choose to stay this way and they are happy to make the change that they need to make it work. Georgina, what do you love about your job? Oh, what do I love? Um, I love the variety, I think. Um, I used to work in an agency back in the UK, but before that I was in, a, in, in just what we call in-house, which is marketing within a company. And I've realized I get bored very, very easily. <laughs> so for me, having dealt with dealing with so many different people, so many different products and learning all the time is really enriching. And I think I just meet some really great, inspiring, interesting people and being able to help them grow professionally and personally, particularly through the training that I do, is a really, really uh, good personal boost that, yeah, it gives me a lot of joy. I'm going to put your website address at the bottom of the screen. That's there for anybody who wants to find out more about the services that you offer. And there they'll find your contact details as well. Georgina, thank you very much for joining me today. It's been great hearing about your business. Thank you, Jane. You live in Manilva, a small village in the Western Costa del Sol. What do you love about where you live? I think probably the family, sunshine, and everything on my doorstep. Your favorite restaurant in the area? Can I pick two? <laughs> I've got a lovely pizzeria called Cachavoy up in the village and a Chiringuito called Manilva Beach down in Sabanillas. Your ideal Sunday, what would that be? <sighs> Lazy, walk on the beach, maybe a bit of paddle boarding and a long lunch. Your best or your favourite weekend escape? Malaga, city. The, your favourite thing about the Costa del Sol? It's got to be the weather, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> your favourite local fiesta? Here in Manilva, we've got something called the Vendimia, which is the wine festival, and it, the whole place comes alive. It's absolutely brilliant, highly recommended. Can you recommend one activity for kids? Playing sports and getting involved in local teams and different sports in your area. And your favorite part of Spain? I think Andalusia is just such a brilliant and diverse region that there's really everything that you could possibly want. Your favorite family friendly beach close to where you live? 
all of them. They're just brilliant. <laughs> you don't need anything more than a bucket of spade, a bucket and spade, and a, and a seat and a few beers. <laughs> and can you describe your life in three words? I struggled with this one. I put down three options. Uh, family fun in the sun was one. Work hard, play hard, or work-life balance. So choose which one you prefer. 